Hi, this is Matthew Robert Payne. Uh, I'm the author of 121 Christian nonfiction books on Amazon, 850 articles on the internet, and uh, 4,100 uh, videos on YouTube. I've been speaking for a long time, saying a lot of things. I've uh, spent over $150,000 publishing books. I've been saying it easy and nice and full of grace and in a really encouraging way for many years. And uh, I just sense, well, have sensed for years that God is very angry. He's very upset. And uh, the Christian church has so far misrepresented him the people actually use the name Jesus as a swear word now. And uh, so we're going to start with a scripture and then God's going to speak. So John, the closest disciple of Jesus, had this to say in 1 John 2.15 to 17. And I doubt that most Christians, I'd say 80% of Christians, have no understanding what this actual verse means. And we're not going to go into what this verse actually means. It may be the first time you've actually heard it. And I've preached on this verse many times in my books, if you care to read them. Do not love this world nor the things it offers you. For when you love the world, you do not have the love of the Father in you. For the world offers only a craving for physical pleasure, a craving for everything we see, and a pride in our achievements and possessions. These are not from the Father, but from this world. And this world is fading away, along with everything that people crave. But anyone who does what pleases God will live forever. So I repeat here what pleases God because anyone who does what pleases God will have eternal life not everyone and we're transitioning into the voice of God now as a prophet I can carry the voice of God so God says not everyone that says a one sentence sinner's prayer someday in emotion and in tears is going to go to heaven. Not everyone who says, Lord, 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 and approaches my son on the last day of judgment is going to go to heaven. He's going to say, depart from me. I never knew you. They're going to say, we did signs and wonders and miracles and cast out demons and save millions of people. And he's going to say to them, depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. Now, if you look into the word lawlessness, the Apostle John says lawlessness is sin. If you think you can say a sinner's prayer and continue practicing sin and be unrighteous and unholy and live a lifestyle of unrighteousness and unholiness, you've got a better thing coming than thinking you're going to heaven. What pleases the Father in 1 John 2, 15 to 17, verse 17, anyone who does what pleases God will live forever. What is that? Well, there would be 98% of pastors and preachers in the world that won't define that for you. The church is being led by blind guides. 95% of the Christian church are in a ditch. Jesus, my son, said if the blind lead the blind, both of them will end up in a ditch. And 95% of the Christian church are in a ditch and they love it that way. They're uneducated, they're blind, they're asleep, they're hopeless, they're useless, and they sing me praises every day. The most common phrase in a Christian prayer meeting is, thank you, Jesus, for the cross. The only reason Christians thank for the cross so much 
is because they're feeling so guilty because they're not doing anything else. My son said, pick up your cross. My son said, anyone who wants to come after me must deny himself, take up his cross daily and follow me. The Christian church have no idea what self-denial denial is. Taking up your cross each day is being led by the Holy Spirit each day and dying to flesh. 95% of the church don't get led by the Holy Spirit, don't know what it is to be directed by the Holy Spirit, don't understand what being led by the Holy Spirit is, don't understand what dying to flesh is, don't understand denying themselves, and certainly do not understand how to follow my son. Do you know how you follow my son? You understand what his 54 parables mean. You do some research and understand that Matthew's got a book on that. The the narrow way, the fifty the, the parables of Jesus made simple. If you follow my son, you'd understand the 50 commandments of Jesus. The apostle John said, if you love Jesus, follow his commands. The apostle John said that nine times. Why is that never preached in a church? Why don't preachers ever preach that the Apostle John said nine times, if you say you love Jesus, obey his commands? Why is it that 99% of you Christians have no idea what the 50 commands of Jesus are? Why is it? Why is that? Why don't you understand what my son preached? My son said, these people honor me with their lips but their hearts are far from me. What did he mean by that? He means they put their hands up in worship, but they don't obey. Matthew asked me six weeks ago, why? Why don't Christians research what Jesus meant in his teachings? He's been frustrated for 22 years, and it's been getting worse and worse. Why doesn't the Christian church understand what Jesus teach? Why don't individual Christians seek out what Jesus taught? Surely they want to follow him. Do you know what I said back to him? Christians have got no interest in what Jesus taught because they know if they know what he taught, they'd have to do it and they don't want to do it. You're disobedient. You're disobedient. You're a waste of space. If I had my way, and I'm being honest with you, if I had my way and there weren't prophecy standing in the way, I would wipe out this world just as I did with Noah's day. This world has become 10 times worse than Noah's day. Not only did we have Sodom and Gomorrah wiped out, but now it's just a popular thing. 20% of people identify as gay. 20%, one in five. In Matthew's parents' generation, it was 2%. 10 years ago, it was 10%. Now it's 20%. You are wicked. You are a waste of time. There's so much money getting asked for. There's so many much money getting donated and, and, and put into the gospel, but they're not preaching the gospel. Matthew's got a series called the Narrow Way series. If you look up the book, The Narrow Way, The Parables of Jesus, there's five books in that series. You can write to Matthew if you've got no money, and he'll give you the money to buy those books. You need to know what my son taught and start to obey him. What sort of husband what sort of husband, if he was going to marry a wife and the wife said to him, there's three things I want from you as a husband. If you use dishes and, and have food, I want you to rinse your dishes and put them neatly on the sink. When you wear clothes, I don't want you putting them all around the bedroom and all around the house. I want you to put them in the clothes hamper so I can wash them and put them away for you. And on no circumstance do I want you to spend time individually by yourself with another female if you're ever going to go out for dinner or spend time with another female I want to meet her I want to speak to her on the phone what if a year into their marriage 
the husband is leaving his clothes all over the place. He's he's using dishes and leaving them in the sink with all the mess on them. And he's having an affair with his secretary. Would you say that a husband fulfilled his role as a husband? Or would you say the husband only loves his wife in words, but not in action? This is how my church treats me. Jesus has 50 things that he taught Christians to do, and they don't even know what that to do. And when they know what they are, they disobey them. I am angry. And I know that doesn't go across with the hyper grace teachers. And I don't know if that really flies with, with most preachers out there. Joel Osteen might have an issue with it. Derek Prince would probably agree with it. Um, just, uh, David Wilkinson would agree with it. Uh, Roland Baker would agree with it. Heidi Baker would agree with it. I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. When I pour out my wrath, the Christians aren't going to be protected. Jesus said, anyone who hears these sayings of mine and does them, he'll be a man that's smart and, and has, a wise man, and he will have built his house on the rock. And when the hard times come, he'll be right. But anyone who hears these teachings is and, and doesn't do them, he'll be likened to a foolish man who built his house upon the sand. And when the hard times come, his house was wiped out. Well, guess what? 99% of people who attend church have built their house on the sand because they do not know the teachings of Jesus and they do not obey the teachings of Jesus. That is not my fault. That is not my fault. That is your fault. You have a Bible and you've refused to learn what my son teaches. I challenge you. I rebuke you. I tell you, get those books. Read what the parables mean. Read what the commandments mean. Get your life together. Get your act together. Come into alignment. Or as these hard times start to roll out, your houses are going to fall. Your life is going to come apart. My son prophesied it. It's never happened yet. It's just about to happen, and you're in trouble. I encourage you, like this post. If you got the courage, write a comment and abuse Matthew if you choose. Do whatever you are. Start to obey my son.